So, communication, it's a fundamental part of the human nature. Before I came here, I was studying translation, so I got to see some of the good, bad and ugly ways it can turn out. When it's done right, people feel really satisfied with your answer. But sometimes communication is not so good, and it can lead to great misunderstandings between people, especially if you're trying to reach people in their own language, and something goes wrong. And so the other day, I was searching for flats in the internet. And yeah, I'm still doing this. And I had this question, OK? And so, but I thought, what if it was in, in English? And um, I got a completely different answer. Somehow, it had misunderstood me in Spanish, but I got a super accurate answer in English with different sources to compare it with. Um, when, you go, when we go to applications that are based on language models, like Bing in this example, things actually get even worse. And even though this is mainly because of the information that is available for each language, we know that cultural nuances and specific information can only be transmitted in certain languages. Still, we find out that most of the tools that we use on a daily basis are, were primarily designed to work in English, like search engines, online marketplaces, and, and chatbots. In the field of AI and language models, uh, we see the same thing. Until most recent, recently, they were only developed with English data. This is a huge problem for the language bias that we already have in our re research community. But it is also a clear threat to, the, to knowledge access, basic internet research and innovation. Another complicated thing with uh, language models like ChatGPT is that even when they create an obvious seeming response, we can't fully explain how it happens, just how we cannot predict what a magic ball will say. That's why most of the times when working with these systems, we, it's, it's kind of, it becomes an exercise of trial and error. We build it, we train it, and then we understand or, or try to understand how it works. How we train these systems is, we give them long texts on the web, we'll have them read through Wikipedia articles, word by word, and then we'll ask them what word is coming next. It's like an autocomplete. And most of the times, they actually get it really good, but that's not because they understand language as we do. They instead use probabilities for words, so most of the times we'll see them answer with misconceptions that are widely spread in the internet, like in these examples. In any case, um, we use this training process to adapt existing language models and train them further in what we call language adaptation. We've seen that models that have been already been trained can be further extended to be multilingual and even work better in certain languages with far less data and far less computing power than is normally required. This is the case of the Aguila and the Floor models that we just uh, released and are available online. But this is just the first part. We know that these systems are flawed with biased training data and strange loopholes that we don't even notice at first. So we can try to decipher the systems that are already out there to try to fix these problems, but most of the times these systems are private or poorly documented on how they were trained. That's why we are only left with the option to create our own systems, which we know are trained on reliable and open source data. And of course, we are all aware of this race that's heating up between companies over who can spend the most compute and 
where the pressure is to go as fast as possible and sacrifice the important stuff like safety testing. While we don't want to commit to this race, we want to prove that having safe and aligned models is the only way. Because in the end, we all know that language models are a really useful tool, but only if we use it wisely. Thanks to projects like Elenia or Aina, we are able to provide better resources to the people and companies who are exploring the potential of these systems to make important real-world decisions. Because after all, just as communication is a fundamental part in our daily lives, making sure that language models are truly multilingual and free from biases is crucial right now. After all, it's not just about understanding words, it's about understanding each other. Thank you.